Hello, this is Randy Smith with Vicinity Manufacturing. I want to take a few moments and discuss the material requirements planning capability within Vicinity specifically for uh, breweries and brewery management, brewery operations. Um, so before we get too far into it, I wanted to take just a minute to discuss uh, some of my demo data and uh, so that we can follow along um, with uh, the data that I've got set up for us. Uh, in this case, I'm using a, a Vicinity Brew IPA 12 ounce can as a finished good example. Um, this bill of material inquiry is showing me that um, to make a, a case of can or a can of beer, it's going to take a packaging item of a 12 ounce can that would be an inventory item, as well as a case shipper to go with it, and then also some bright beer. Uh, now to make bright beer, we would take wort and yeast in the fermentation process um, and that would make the bright beer. Within wort uh, would be my um, brewing formula which would be malt, uh, some water, hops, any other thing you want to add. So what I'm trying to associate here is that when I when I suggest that I want to make 12 ounce cans um, of my beer, it would also suggest that I need um, packaging items of cans, shippers, some bright beer. If I need to make bright beer, it will suggest that I make wort um, and also use yeast. And uh, to making of the wort, if I need to make it, uh, malt, water, and hops are associated with the wort. So with that information in mind, let's take a look at uh, some of the data that we've got in front of us. Specifically, I'm going to remind you of the production schedule. There's actually a video uh, that goes in-depth on this, on how the production schedule can be generated from a forecast, sales orders, etc. Um, but just in, in purposes of re reminding us, I've got three sections or three areas of my production facility that I'm wanting to schedule independent from each other. I've got the bottling line. In this case, I'm wanting to uh, segregate out, of course, the, the IPA packaging and the stout packaging, and I can see the various products that I'm going to be uh, packaging, as well as the quantities I'm packaging by user-definable time period. In this case, I'm looking at eight two-week periods out into the future. So that would be the bottling line. Uh, the bottling line, of course, is being fed from the fermentation tanks. Uh, through Bright Beer. And what I'm seeing here is that I've got IPA Bright and Stout Bright uh, that uh, is being processed at these increments through the fermentation process. And as it relates to material requirements planning, let's get to the brew house because the brew house um, is, is um, being driven out from the requirement for wort and we are making a certain amount of wort each of these time periods out into the future. So each of these um, planned orders or batch tickets to make wort uh, has raw material requirements, hops, malt, water, whatever else you want to be adding into the, um, into the brewing process. Uh, let's take a look at the impact then on each of those raw materials. So now that we understand we've got a, a production schedule out there, the MRP is actually driving from that production schedule. In this case, I brought up uh, the component idea, the inventory item hops. Of course, I can have as many different inventory items as I would like. I'm going to just pick on this one inventory item that I've got hops, a specific type of hops. Um, I'm seeing in my inventory system that I currently have got 630 pounds on hand, and I like to hold a safety stock of 100 pounds. So therefore, for planning purposes, I've got 530 pounds available to me uh, for production. Now on the left hand column, um, well first off, the, we're, everything is lined up here by date, uh, date that is needed and the date I'm going to receive the inventory, etc. So everything's lined up by date. The first column to talk about is the gross requirement. The first time we have a requirement for the, this hops is when we're wanting to process or make stout wort. Uh, so uh, on the production schedule we saw that stout is going to be manufactured on a specific date. Specifically we're planning to brew on the 13th. To be able to brew on the 13th, I need to have uh, 4,916 pounds of hops available to me. I already know that I don't have that quantity, so I'm going to need to buy it. Now what the system is saying is for you to be able to process that, you need to get 4,500 pounds in by that date so that you could use it to process in, in a brew. 
Now know that I have chosen to set up my system for this particular hops to order it in 500 pound increments. That's completely definable by you, but that's why the system isn't ordering the exact quantity or even for that matter the difference between what I need and the quantity that I've got. The system is rounding it to the nearest 500 um, pounds. So what it's going to do is suggest that I order 4,500 pounds to have it received by the 13th. Now, to be able to have it in-house by the 13th, I need to put in a purchase order uh, related to the, the lead time of that item. Now, in this case, I, t I tell the system that I can get this, this hops in seven days. And so I am needing to put in a purchase order on the 6th to be able to be received by the 13th. So therefore, this planned order actually represents that I need to put in a purchase order and the date in which I need to put in the purchase order. So you can see that I need to put in a purchase order for 4,500 units, 4,500 4, pounds on the 6th to be received by the 13th so that I can consume it in a, um, a brew to make my stout. Now I also see the same thing happening a few days later, in this case to make my IPA. In this case I'm going to need to be ordering 5,000. Again, I'm rounding to the nearest 500 based on a user setup. And the system is now suggesting that I put in a purchase order on the 9th to be received on the 16th so I can go into production to make that product. And it just continues that process uh, through um, uh, every record that it can see of usage of hops. Of course, you'll see the same thing with uh, any other in inventory item. I'll just go ahead and put in malt as an example, and you see the same scenario. In this case, I'm starting with a balance of just under 3,800 pounds. I need uh, 4,900 pounds. In this case, I'm not rounding, so this is an example of where um, I'm just telling to order the exact amount. So it's just telling me to order the difference between what I need, allowing me to get um, that brew completed. So with that in mind, if I'm the purchasing uh, person in the brewery, my responsibility then could really be limited to looking at the planned orders because the system has already netted all my inventory together and has told me when I need to pur put in a purchase order to be received by a particular date. As long as my vendor lead times are manageable, um, that I put in the, the lead time that I get for the inventory item, all I really need to be doing is watching the system when it tells me that I need to place an order by a specific date. Now Vicinity has a really good tool for the purchasing folks to, to do that. Uh, we've actually got a tool called Vicinity View that allows us to create um, queries on the database um, without having to be a programmer. I specifically have gone in and created a view into my data that allows me to go look at those ingredients that go into the brew. Uh, specifically, I'm looking at hops and malt and yeast, etc. So this is an, an example of, of it is a summary list of all those records we were just looking at on the MRP inquiry screen. So for example, if I open up uh, uh, the MRP inquiry again, you can see the first record is for 1147, the next one is 9646. You will see that down in the malt area, uh, there's that first record and there's the next record. So in vicinity view, I'm now seeing a summary list of all of those records I need to take action on. Here's the date in which I need to put in the purchase order. Here's the date in which I need to receive it. It's all sitting right here in front of me. Everything we've talked about so far in the demo is basically just explanation for the data behind this screen. So I can look at this data, basically run all of my purchasing requirements right here from this list. Now the next step would be, okay, how do I want to activate this and create a purchase order? Well, that kind of depends on um, how you want to handle purchasing. Most people would sort this, say, by a specific, by date, the date in which I need to put in a purchase order. There's no reason for me to put in a purchase order for things way out into the future. It's nice information to know to see if there are any reasons to advance uh, purchase, purchase into the future. I would be able to see the total requirement of hops based on my schedule moving out into the future. And remember, most of this data is based on forecasts, forecasts of 12 ounce cans, 12 ounce bottles, kegs, etc. And it's driven all the way back through the raw material to identify what raw materials are going to be needed and when they're going to be needed. So if I'm the purchasing person, what I would probably do is take a query like this, sort on the, sort on the start date, and I would only need to look at transactions through a specific date. 
Now I can uh, print this, I could uh, do other things with it, but probably the easier thing to do would be to drop it to Excel. I just hit the Excel button and nothing all that magical to that. And in this case, let's say that I'm only really interested in putting in my purchase orders through the end of June. I can get rid of that data pretty easily. And um, I'll just sort it, uh, say by, um, by component, just so that I've got uh, all the same components together because I might, or inventory items, because I might buy them uh, from, I'd buy them from the same vendor. In this case, I'll also subtotal. In this case, I'll subtotal on the component ID and I'll get a total for my stock unit of measure. So now I can see that I need to put in a purchase order uh, for each of these items. In this case, uh, 14,500 of hops and uh, 6,000 units for malt. It was that easy to do. All I needed to do in vicinity is go take a look at my plan, my um, uh, vicinity view, the planned orders for purchase orders, and decide which items I, I wanted to make. So we're hopeful that this is helpful uh, for you. And if you have any other questions related to vicinity specifically uh, for a brewery operation, don't hesitate to give us a call. We look forward to working with you in the near future.